Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. In this episode we begin on the tech tree because I've been frustrated by the fact that our procedural part field tanks are limited to 3 meters in diameter and that's limiting my design somewhat. And looking at the configuration files because there's no other way to really tell how we manage to unlock the larger sizes, it seems like ultimately all restrictions are lifted by metamaterials which is this one. So if we can unlock this then then we should be good but there's really no other way of uh, telling I think. It doesn't show a procedural parts tank uh, and it getting bigger or anything. Uh, in the Realism Overhaul series the RP0 tech tree does sort of indicate where those things happen. So it turns out that even though I thought this uh, technology called composites wasn't that useful it might be the key to to uh, solving our rocket building woes and we'll get to why that's important in a bit because I've got a I've got a jewel mission set up and because the jewel missions payload is really heavy and we're gonna try and fling it all the way to jewel I wanted a larger rocket but instead we had to put more boosters so you'll see that in a bit but first we need to get back to our Minmus missions currently underway and make sure they get to where they need to go before I forget, by the way, uh, some comments revealed to me the more complicated crew skills system of MKS. And so now I know that uh, scientists are necessary for greenhouses and agricultural modules. Taking a look at who's assigned, interestingly, it says assigned five, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine here. So there's something weird going on here, too. Also, I don't seem to be getting the the other things, the miners, technicians, mechanics, biologists. I just got, I just have uh, pilots, scientists, and engineers. Um, but scientists should be fine for the agricultural stuff, but I'm a little bit worried about whether I'm going to get the other things that I need. Oh, these are tourists, that's why. Uh, oh, right, because we need to make sure that they get their... Um, supplies so that's going to be a little bit complicated okay we are now approaching Minmus with the carbonite power unit but the four Kerbals at Minmus aren't really showing up on my life support status anymore I'm not too sure what to think of that Sigmore Kerman also reads expired on the Minmus cycler though we are due to help him out with that with the other piece that's coming in and that's actually the the stage that boosted this up. Yeah. Okay. Well, things are things are not too happy right now. Yeah, I, I'm still not entirely sure. Uh, I'll have to say, obviously, tack light support is much easier than this. <laughs> this is this is very complicated. Um, these these kerbals turning into tourists. I adapted this power unit uh, for our jewel mission. It won't be a power unit, but uh, basically the drilling unit, carbonite drilling unit that I've got planned for my mission to jewel is based on this sort of thing. Instead of KIS containers, I have two small power generators. Okay, well, we are in orbit. And. That's the spy satellite. Our base is over here. But Minmus does rotate very quickly. It's better to be in a low orbit to make a decision about when to actually descend. This high orbit, it's tough to tell. Tough at this angle to uh, decide exactly when to start out, but maybe this is a good time to bring it in a bit. Okay, target difference 151 meters, in theory. Okay, maybe place this as sort of a bridge between the base and the other module. So about 25 meters away from the base, let's say. Would make that good. Oh, gear down, that might be important. Okay, I should probably stop using fuel. 
as much as possible. I'm only 44 meters per second left here. Not that we are in imminent danger or anything. Let's just take this particular location. Okay. We are on the ground. We are 22 meters from that flag. And presumably eh, within pipe distance from the base. The problem is we can't really get anybody in the base to uh, connect the pipes, right? Well, let's get the drill going first. Deploy drill. Okay, and then activate generator. Shouldn't use too much. And we'll start LFO as well. In the fullness of time, that will give us plenty of stuff. Um, if we time up a little bit, slowly accumulating. But uh, taking a look at the base, they're all tourists. We're probably going to have to, and it's because of supplies. And uh, so the reason for that is apparently that the modules I chose, this is not, uh, no, no, yes. Um, the canisters I chose don't do the supply transfer. Let's take a look at that in the VAB to see which canisters, which containers I should have picked instead of these. Alright, so the containers that we were using were under the life support tab and it was these and they don't have the sort of resource transfer protocol. Uh, according to Mikko in the comments, and I completely trust him, uh, we should have been using these container tanks, I think? Uh, yes, these have USI Module Resource Warehouse. Stores shareable resources, and uh, so I've added those on into here, and they now have supplies. We have a total of 2,400 supplies being carried by this. Uh, let's take a look at how that compares with the other version. Uh, life support. I mean these uh, 1.25 meter ones had 500. So I guess I guess we're carrying a reasonable load. Yeah, it's not too different. So let's pack this up and I think uh, what we should do is send it over right now while the other piece of our mission is trying to get to Sigmore. Uh, that will dock with Sigmore's Minmus Cycler and uh, supply him this will supply the other Kerbals and maybe they can hook things up manually to get the resources from the other pod. But Supply Master 3 and let's bring it out and launch. Well it's night time but there's no time to waste. SAS on, Thrall is up and launch. <laughs> We've got some formidable clouds overhead here. Okay, that's a uh, good apoapsis. We'll wait a bit after the flame effects die down. Open doors. Okay. And I guess I should do the infernal box thing. I forgot about that last time. Let's extend those out. All right, separation. And ignition. Okie dokie, and that should be recovered. It's got parachutes, landing legs, and everything. And shutting down for egg deorbiting. And so let's point retrograde. Release the egg. Point prograde. Oh, the little engines are clipping a, a little bit there. That's not good. Uh, all right. Okay, that's good enough. Let's transfer to Minmus. All right, we're probably off our timing by a little bit. We did uh, have the destruction of the egg stage, but recovery of the skipper stage, so that's all good. Let's get going. Now, for this transfer, I decided to plot a mid-course plane change, though that's going to end up being wrong now that I've got the timing wrong. 
Um, yeah, really the off-plane transfer thing isn't all that useful for Minmus. After all, our mid-course plane change here is 83 meters per second. That's not a whole lot. We can weather that, especially with the nuclear engines. Alright, but this is going to take a little bit of time and probably some adjusting. I'll catch you on the other side of that main course adjustment. Alright, we're on our way to Minmus. We've made our transfer burn and the main course adjustment. And we're due to arrive with periapsis of 74 kilometers. However, we've got this particular uh, part of the Carbonite mission that's supposed to dock with Sigmar Kerman's Minmus cycler to deal with. So let's take a look at that. Ah, uh, well, this uh, this might be a bit of a problem. I didn't put any antennae on here, unfortunately. This was just a poodle stage that was supposed to bring some extra life support. But we're not going to get close enough to Minmus. See, I should have done the mid-course adjustment instead of trying an off-plane transfer on this one. If we had gotten close to Minmus, we would have been able to communicate with, like, the scan right or something. But because we're passing high, this is just going to exit out. Once it gets back over to, well, will it go back in, over into Kerbin? Or is this going into interplanetary space? Hold on. Um, yes, yeah, so it'll cycle back over to Kerbin with a 142-kilometer periapsis. Let's make sure we pay attention to it there, and we'll try and do something with it. It's got 1,326 meters per second to make some sort of adjustment but we'll uh, add an alarm for that but yeah Sigmor is just gonna have to wait a little bit longer unfortunately yeah well on the bright side habit home is working out for him even though the supplies have expired electric charge is probably still fine maybe we should take a look at Sigmor before uh, continuing on with the supply master 3 and its attempt to land at the base all right, we are now approaching Minmus with this supply mission, and we'll see if this one works. Okay, making orbit. Okay, time to figure out the landing. Okay, um... We're having one of these high approaches again. And a little bit too far to one side, I think. Well, let's see if we can just do this. Oh. Uh, we actually have to go closer this way. Okay. Was targeting the wrong item as usual. Maybe that flag will be better. Okay, we're going up again. It looks like we could do with a little bit of component that way. Well, the nuclear engines do give quite a lot of leeway as far as maneuvering is concerned. Okay, this module landed uh, 25 meters from the flag and suddenly everybody's back to work. And how long can we Expect them to stay at work 23 days, it says. That's not good enough, but now we can get them to connect up the other supply mission, too. Oh, wait, now it's 32 days. Hmm, now it's 37 days. We'll wait for it to catch up to reality, because it seems to be increasing the number of days that they're going to uh, stay at work. We're at 41 now. Can you give me more than that? Not so much, apparently. Okay. We didn't actually visit Sigmore yet. Um, 
All right, let's have an engineer hook things up then. We need the uh, Cabo Electric thing with Jig. Melemony. Uh, Melemony is going to need inventory. Uh, Melemony is also sort of floating above. Okay. Um, now it's on the ground. Okay. Uh, you don't have any particular inventory. Gonna need to get it from that container. Okay, can disassemble the part, but can't currently access the inventory from the part. Let's jet up. Inventory, and let's get uh, inventory here. Uh, you're going backwards. Okay, that's good. That's fine. All right. Um, I don't see the connector ports on here. Oh, there it is. It's underneath the landing leg. Okay, equip. There we go. Actually, let's make sure we grab the other one and put it in a more accessible place. No good having it under the landing leg. When it comes time to connect things up, the leg will be in the way. Um, Melemony is a little bit awkward with the whole moving thing. Sometimes using jetpack, sometimes having a stutter step. Okay. Alright, let's hope that thing is... At a good range. So that these curvils can have power during the nighttime side of Minmus. Right now they're all right on power, but that's only because it's daylight. Ah, it's too far. Shoot. Um Link? Ah. Try to get closer by attaching to that, but that's not good enough. Just a little bit too far. Well, that's obviously not going to be good enough either. Maybe we can move the attachment point on the other side, like onto this, this window. I don't have to move the carbonite mining rig. Nope. Nope. Too far. Uh, maybe we can try the thruster again. No, judging from the redness, it can't happen. Okay. Let's have the lemony stand by and we'll move stuff. Okay, that's probably the right way. Oh no, not right now. Uh, close the line. Okay, that should be closer. Okay, a link has been made. Let's get back inside with Melemony. Well, it still says 15 days of electric charge, but um, all we have to do is deploy the drill. And it should remain charged as long as there's carbonite around here. The generator needs to be started. LFO. We can stop LFO for now. Good thing we did it. It allowed this to have a lot more delta V. 
Okay, we could move the other supply mission closer and hook it up as well. Yeah, this one. It's got a lot of the Delta V because it's got the nuclear engines as well. I guess they couldn't hurt. Yeah, let's try and move it closer and then maybe another engineer can pop out and hook it up. Or Melemony. Okay, that should be close enough. Mm. Maybe a little bit closer. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, no, 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 don't go sideways. Okay, let's not do any more of that. Actually, Melemony is our only engineer, so he'll have to EVA again. Highly unusual, but he still got his drill. That's good. Did not lose his drill. The sign of a good engineer right there. I think there's a inventory can here, maybe? Let's see. Or is there not? No, just a fertilizer tank. We'll have to pull two ports off of the, that uh, carbonite miner. I think it should still have two free. Okay, that should be that. Now, how much food, water, and oxygen, well, supplies do they have? 111 days. Well, that's good. So it's really just Sigmore to deal with. And then we have enough until, well, at least through Jewel. Um, before we deal with the Duna missions, we're going to have to resupply Georgie and Samrina in that base or move at least one of them over to the main base on the moon. So that'll be the plan there. Uh, can we do fertilizer things now? There's mulch here. No, we don't really have a greenhouse here. That's only on the moon. We don't have one available. Okay, well, this looks to be all set up. Now it's mainly a question of Sigmore. Okay, well, we got some world first milestones. We have started constructing the first outpost on Minmus and performed a docking maneuver on Minmus. They gave us credit for Thought we already had a outpost on Minmus a while back, but okay. Anyway, uh, we now have communication with this thing. The key is to make sure that we have communication on the other side. Um, and actually to have another side, because right now we're not rendezvousing with Minmus at all. Uh, this was just a dummy maneuver, so I'm going to have to... Well, there's an opportunity right there, if I ever saw one. But how long is that going to be? Okay, well, while this is a noble effort we're uh, trying to undergo here, it's also not very good in terms of timing. Uh, the node is in 26 days, and it's going to take 44 days for Minmus to get back over to this location. We can't really shift our orbit in this direction very easily. And so, yeah, it'll, it'll just take too long to get these supplies to Sigmore. I think it would be better off for us if we make a completely fresh uh, rocket to send him supplies. We'll, we'll keep this in mind as something we can do. Honestly, I don't really want to mess with this. I think, I mean, it's a spent stage. We can just abandon it. It's not carrying that many supplies because it was lifting up the entire other mission as well. Yeah, I think it would be better to just build something fresh and launch it right now. Okay, actually cancel that. I finally decided to visit Sigmore, and it turns out Sigmore's got 61 days of supplies, and there's no real telling how long he can stretch those, because uh, he's got the nomadic here. I don't know how well this is reading 
the the value of the Nomomatic, if you will. Sigmar himself is a pilot, so this Nomomatic doesn't really require any sort of scientist or anything. So this will cover Sigmar at least through the jewel transfer point. So that's good. Looks like uh, we can just leave him be. So why don't I conclude the episode with an introduction to our jewel mission that we're going to launch in 38 days. We'll actually do the launch and start the mission off in the next episode just in case I think of something else to do in those 38 days. You know, we might want to take care of something else. But yeah, let's turn to the VAB and see what that looks like. Since the next episode is probably going to be a dedicated jewel episode, I might think of some other things to do and also might rethink this. You note know, the really huge fairing on this and this is why I said I'm sort of frustrated by having a 3 meter limit on the procedural tanks here. Not that we, I, I don't think we have any other tanks. Uh, I suppose we could scale them up with tweak scale, can we? We could sort of cheat the system like that, right? But we'll, we'll, be, we'll be good and obey the limits for now. I do want to unlock the, the larger sizes properly. Anyway, so this is the mission. And what we have here is a drilling unit. And we, we've got uh, four spark engines. I know I could have put nuclear engines, but for this variant I decided to go with spark engines. It's actually an upgrade from the original Twitch engines that are supposed to be on this, well, that were on the Carbonite uh, power unit. Anyway, uh, we've got a procedural liquid fuel tank. These pods contain the descent fuel, and uh, so for descent, these will be unlocked, and then this is the ascent fuel. This is supposed to land on Bopper Paul. That's the intention, and that's, that has about 400 meters per second of delta V down. And then 400 up with a full load of carbonite. And it's got RCS for docking and obviously solar panels. But its actual its main power supply would be from drilling the carbonite and using these portable carbonite generators. So, yeah. Otherwise it will operate the same. Uh, here, uh, from here on down is the orbital portion of it. And you can see we have solar panels, but of course they're not very effective around um, around Joule, but we should have them anyway. Uh, for supplementary power we can drill for carbonite and of course uh, convert it to electric charge once we've redocked the mining vessel to the orbital station. We also have these fuel cells. We've got 10 fuel cells all together just in case, you know, just in case we need that. Uh, it's got the carbonite distiller to turn stuff into mop propellant or water interesting point. I don't have any facility to carry water. This is the mop propellant tank which is only partially loaded and then this is the liquid fuel and oxidizer tank uh, for transit there. Actually maybe I'll dump the oxidizer there. We don't really need it. I've clipped the dish in because otherwise it won't fit in the fairing and our fairing is quite large already. We've got a lot of communication so lots of relay, lots of direct communication and we'll hope that all holds out. Um, it is a long way to Jewel and we have problems at Moho but we have upgraded the tracking station since then. We've got little probes here and they're mainly uh, to check for resources. We've got two with the survey scanner but I tweak scaled the survey scanner to 50% and I'm not 100% sure that that's okay. So I've carried these uh, carbonite detection arrays but they might not work properly either. Um, I don't remember because uh, I'm still going with the stock scanning system rather than the ScanSat scanning system. We do have ScanSat installed, but yeah, I, I always forget how these things work. So we hope that, that this is all going to work out for scanning for carbonite in particular, but other resources as well. These are mop propellant tanks, and we've got downscaled, 40% scaled puff engines which I thought were the best thing to go with here. Uh, this ensures that we can use the RCS blocks on these probes, uh, which are for maneuvering, but also you note that they're attached as dock, uh, to uh, docking ports here, and so they can redock potentially. I'm not entirely sure I need that capability, but you never know. 
we could retrieve them. They've got a lot of solar panels, but they don't have any other way of powering themselves. So the diminished solar panel efficiency at Joule is going to hurt them a bit, but I don't think they need that much power. As far as other science, they're just carrying a thermometer and barometer for now. Um, we might send variants with other things. Yeah, and actually I could potentially have some other mission. This is pretty extreme as it is, of course. Uh, we're trying to send 60 tons over to... Well, not all 60 tons is actually going to be sent over to Jewel. I take it back. Uh, these are launch stages, which is... Oh, I forgot to mention, of course, we used to have the Colonization Heavy, which had two boosters. This has four, so it's the Colonization Super Heavy. And our intention is to recover the boosters so we don't bite the whole 500,000 fun cost of this. That'll be really, really important. I do want these boosters back, and I'll cut down on the cost of the mission. But we will lose the core, and there's a skipper stage here. And the skipper stage is going to start us on our way to Jewel with a thousand, call it a thousand seven hundred meters per second. So we're trying to get 120 tons to orbit, and then it's a 60 ton sk skipper stage, and we'll need to use some of our nuclear stage using an LV NX3 Phobos or Phoebus atomic rocket motor, which has slightly better ISP than the regular Nervas, and of course good thrust. And that has a total of 2,884 meters per second to do all the things we need to do around Jewel and also complete our Jewel transfer. We will need to get to Bop or Paul, but we might need to move from our initial Jewel orbit to Bop or Paul, depending on which one turns out to have the carbonite. So, and of course, it's always good to have extra fuel if necessary. So that's the idea, but it's got this big fairing which has to make you nervous, right? I mean, so in the next episode, we'll see how that goes, and perhaps I'll build a few other things to supplement this so it's not just headed over to Jewel. Um, okay, that staging is definitely wrong here. Okay, we'll put it like that for now. All right, so look forward to that in the next episode, and I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, perhaps even about this or the upcoming Jewel missions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.